Good, Good morning, morning everyone. Everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. And it's Monday. Yes, yeah. it's Monday. But hey. there's something different. What what is it? I think there's something following me. Ah! <laughs> now, we have a poster up behind us for the Fringe <laughs> Festival, which starts tomorrow. Yeah, that was and really And we have some guests on um, today to talk about the Fringe Fest it's in a, a little bit. It's but a first morning. Uh, this week, uh, the weather is looking a little bit nicer for the oh. earlier part of this week. So it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, I'm going to take my um, family up to Glacier National Park uh, today. Scott's, you're going to take your family up there? Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, because my, my car has better gas mileage than their, like, Explorer. It just sounded like you're a dad and had some kids. Um, I'm going to take my family to I'm Glacier. I'm going to take my family. And it's like, darn, get out and pull this car over. Anyways, okay, so let's pull over to see what the weather's like. So it is currently 52 degrees outside. Uh, your high is gonna be 88 degrees, your low is gonna be 52. And of course, it's gonna continue until we reach Wednesday night and Thursday where you have that 40% of uh, showers and stormy weather. Well, it looks like summer's back. It was kind of cool last week, yep. which is always nice. It did uh, put out that fire out in Hamilton. It was 60% contained after that rain storm that we had last week, so that was good. Yeah, it, the Way containment to go. went up. It's crazy, um, yeah. but of course, uh, I just want to give then. a uh, uh, my condolences uh, to uh, the uh, um, one of my old librarians from Big Sky High School who oh. died in a car wreck just this last weekend. That's really sad. Yeah, Where really was sad. it? It was uh, on a trip to Bozeman. Wow. Oh, she was that woman that died outside of Bozeman. I heard about that. Yeah, I'm really sorry, Scott. Really was she your favorite librarian? She was one of the librarians, and I re I, I remember her, but it was just like it was like when I saw a picture of her. Oh man. That's really sad, That's I'm really sorry. Sad. Yeah. Life is precious and fleeting. Yep. But of With course, this um, music in the back, that was perfect. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> but I just wanted to get uh, through the roads report just a little bit before I jump into new programming, just to tell you guys what kind of construction is happening in Missoula. So if you're trying to get around Missoula, just be aware that um, a lot of these streets have some construction going on here. So uh, Brook Street, the intersection of old Highway 93 to Pizza Hut, which is basically right next to a reserve to uh, the area. <laughs> Pizza the Hut old is your Walmart, landmark. You know, old Safeway, all that stuff. <laughs> 39th Street, reserve to Russell, uh, Hillview Way. So if you guys are going up uh, South Hills and you know most people take Hillview Way, that road is dealing with a lot of uh, construction as well because they're improving that road as well. Um, South 5th Street West and six, um, South 6th West. So it's 6th and 5th Street if you guys are going from Uptown Missoula or going to uh, Uptown Missoula, expect like it's pretty routes. much from it's the crazy. university. It's like at the Big Dipper all the way up through past Orange Street. I've driven that. through there. It's kind of crazy. So if you uh, ever if you're driving around that area, just be mm -hmm. cautious of that. So just kind of stay on Brook Street and maybe go around and stay on like Orange Street and whatnot. So just be Something aware of that. that. And then of course Linda Vista and all those upper upper and lower Middle Creek areas are dealing with some road construction right now. But that's about it for some roads reports. We have guests on. Um, I'm not going to talk anymore, but of course we do have some new program that's happening on MCAT tonight. Uh, we have City Club, which is updated every month, and it's basically, uh, it's going to highlight the uh, guy who's running for governor as a Republican, and it's Greg Forte. Mm. I'm sure you, all of you have already seen ads about it for our state governor here, there, and there. But he uh, showed up on the uh, City Club, and he talked a little bit about, um, you know, doctors and patients and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But of course, uh, our other uh, stuff is about beekeeping tonight at 7 p.m., and then of course, uh, right after that, it's a little bit about Shakespeare and Johnson, and the old Shakespearean about what it what it means to be like a famous author, but also retaining to the rights to your um, your art, the so, rights. So cool. this is like the beginning of like what, what what it really meant to be owning the copyright of your stuff. Ah, copyright, mm -hmm. super important. Yep. So when we come back, we'll have uh, <laughs> yeah, I got that. We'll have uh, Michelle and we'll have John. Yeah, you guys. Fest. This week is Fringe Fest, so we're gonna have Michelle Rijo on as well as John, who is from Canada and is a veteran in Fringe Fest. So we'll hear all about them pretty soon. Uh, domestic honeybees are races or varieties or types of Apis mellifera. They uh, Italians, Carniolans, Russians, they are not subspecies. There are two subspecies. This again is mostly an academic argument. Uh, Cape bees we do not want in the U.S. We watch very, very no. close. So Feltham's image of Johnson not waiting to be given a laurel crown but grabbing it for himself um, expresses um, what seems to have been a pretty common reaction among Londoners that Johnson was sort of getting beyond himself. He was a little too stuck up, a little too entrepreneurial. Um, 
But Johnson's action, I think, involved more than just ego. He was also asserting rights of the artists that did not yet exist, but should exist in his view, rather like the artist formerly known as Prince, who did not want the recording companies to own his work. Johnson was a self-made man, and he wanted to take what he felt belonged to him. 85% of emergency room visits today are uh, um, could have been diagnosed over the phone. So as it relates to regulations, I think that you know, pendulums tend to swing. No one wants to go to no regulations because that would be anarchy. The other extreme is strangulation. And as I talk to docs today, they tell me they're spending more time filling out paperwork than they are actually seeing patients. And that's not right either. So we need to, we need to work on that. Hey, we're here with uh, Michelle Rizzo and uh, John Manuel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're here to talk about the French Fest that is happening this week. So um, please. Yeah. Take it away. Tell us, what is Fringe Fest? First well, of all, let's start with that. Great. Um, hi, Missoula. Yay, thanks for having us on for the fourth year in a row. Um, Fringe Festival. Okay, so um, it's a performing arts festival began in 1947 in Edinburgh, Scotland, and it incorporated in the 70s, and now it's in currently over 250 cities around the world that we know of, and it continues to grow. We just um, became members of the Canadian Association of Fringe Festivals this year which um, last year gave $3.2 million in ticket sales back to the artists. 100% awesome. of the ticket sales go back to the artists. And um, that's why it, this platform works. This platform is designed for um, the artists to showcase new and live works on a risk risk basis so they they pay a registration fee to be part of the festival we provide the platform and the overall promotion of the festival and they also have to promote their own piece mm -hmm. but um, it, it gets them into the venues uh, at a very low rate this year our registration fee was $75 oh yeah that's nothing yeah exactly yeah. and um, let's see what else can I tell you well um, you can tell us uh, what we can expect from this French festival in Missoula right. oh that's a good <laughs> um, well, you can expect to be entertained wildly um, throughout the f five days. We have over 40 events, although we have three cancellations, and I'll tell you about that later. Um, we have, uh, we're outside the box, we have venues that are on porches, so we put together a porch concert series where um, the performers are on the porches and the audience are on the, uh, the lawns, and then we have an art gallery in the street, and it's connected to the Kettle House brewery so there's a beer garden and a food gar a food court um, that's on Wednesday uh, our, our open night you can come and enjoy meeting all the artists who will be here to um, help celebrate and honor and usher in our our new um, festival this year um, on Thursday we have a river fringe where we paired up the performers who are, co are coming here I wanted them to have an experience um, that is very much Missoula so um, why not go on the river so we were rafting with Lewis and Clark trail adventure there'll be a performance at the put in, so the launch at the Sear Bridge, and then at Fish Creek. Have you been on the Albertine Gorge? Mm -mm. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, no. Come on. Thursday. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, what time on Thursday? It starts at 10. It's, okay. You have to go on the, our website to register. It's, you have to pay the Lewis and Clark fee, yeah. or else you can bring your own boat if you have your own boat. Join <laughs> us. So the Fish Creek, there are two performances one that will last for the, re the remainder of the. Um, time on the river and then that evening at Dunrovin Ranch which is also outside the box <laughs> that's in Lolo there are several performances there ending with campfire stories told by um, Captain Clark and um, uh, mountain man Rick Hawkhurst there's also um, wonderful horse painting I love Suzanne Miller if you ever get to, to ch a chance to um, interview her mm -hmm. please do she's a lovely lady next year we're gonna be doing um, E uh, equine fringe arts extravaganza nice. at her place. So, um, what else can I tell you? Friday, we have traditional theater and also, oh, I should get back up at Thursday, there's a um, documentary titled On the Fringe, and you can really, under after seeing this um, documentary, 90 minutes, um, mm -hmm. you'll have a grasp of the um, the community that supports Fringe and 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 this is, he's part of the <laughs> yeah, community so right here. John, John, John yes. tell us about yourself. Like, so you have got experience with the Fringe Festival in Canada. Yes. And so tell us about that experience. Well, I've attended the Montreal Fringe mm -hmm. and I've volunteered for several years at the Vancouver Fringe, and both of those fringes are mature. They've been thirty years or more. Uh, they have hundreds of performances, um, artists from all over. 
but I was particularly happy to come down to Missoula because it's very interesting to see a French like beginning and growing and Michelle has done this amazing thing because it's different than the mature fringes. The mature fringes they provide a place for artists to who are on the fringe, they're not mainstream, to get a start, to get exposure, uh, to build an audience, but they're the mature, whereas a beginning uh, fringe like this, Michelle has brought these things together, which are different, like porch fringe, I haven't seen anything like that before, that incorporate elements that are particularly local and regional, like the ranch, um, the uh, the Alberton um, Canyon thing, the slow float and sing along. Yeah. I haven't seen anything like that in any other festival. And these festivals, like all other festivals, are provided not just for entertainment for the uh, residents, but also they attract visitors. Mm -hmm. And I think a fringe which incorporates particularly uh, local flavor and and events hap that don't happen at other fringes is great. And I'd like to see it grow. And it's, you know, I really enjoy being a part of it, even a small part. That's one yeah. awesome thing about Montana is that we have so many different like venues to do things, mm -hmm. like the ranches, yeah. on the river, mm -hmm. like in the mountains. So it's kind of just like getting yeah. over there. And it's definitely nice to get a different perspective. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like you, like you said, it's yeah. like, oh, I didn't think about it, about it that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe we yeah. can try it at our fringe as well. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> Michelle is very imaginative and creating and bringing in the incorporating these elements that I haven't seen elsewhere and they look like they could be a lot of fun like there is in addition to the uh, the rafting on the river um, there's also a slow float sing-along mm -hmm. which sounds just like goofy fun and I like goofy fun so like why not? Me too. Yeah. That's yeah. Friday, so, and yeah. we have a shuttle bus, but there's a band from Duluth, Minnesota that'll be joining us at the Big Dipper Ice Cream from noon until one. Mm -hmm. At one o'clock, the shuttle arrives. It's $3 fee to take you to the Put-In mm -hmm. at East Missoula. It's an hour and a half float. Afterwards, we have a series of um, traditional theater, and, and you'll meet Sean in a few minutes, mm -hmm. and he'll tell you about his performance. Mm -hmm. um, no refund. And then uh, there's um, also the, the, the Fringe Lounge session which you two will be participating in, mm -hmm. um, where we are, uh, we have several bands, and D. Ryan is um, flying his band in, he can tell you about that next, mm -hmm. and um, we have the Fringe Lounge Sessions where we are interviewing the artists, it's like one of the biggest um, draws for artists to come to Missoula is basically they're guaranteed, almost, yeah. to have coverage by the media, which is really important for when they go on to the next Fringe, that they have something to as a media kit to Definitely. share. So that's, and MCAT's yeah. always super happy Thank to be a part of it and yeah, we we so love much. our artists and we love the fringe yes so, so yeah. we're we're about almost out of time uh, let's uh let's kind of bring it back to what you guys are doing for your kickoff event and yeah. tell us when and where people can um start with you guys okay tomorrow night at the crystal theater starting at six i think gosh i'm supposed to put all this in my memory <laughs> i forget go online our online um our online calendar is accurate, thank you. Um, however, um, I would not go anywhere else for accuracy. <laughs> the calendar is, if you scroll up, you'll see right there, the top, tippy top. No, other, keep going, keep going. There, right here, Show, shows and festivals. And, um, and that'll give you the up updated version. So we start with a, um, there's, when you walk into the crystal, there'll be a performance already happening. We have a cameo appearance of, by our Mayor Angin and the, the gentleman we love to love. And um, then we have a blessing, because I, I, really, I really want the fringe to be a blessing for all. So I've invited um, area spiritual leaders and we have a Salish, uh, uh, traditional dancer who will be singing a song a blessing for us and followed by a word from our sponsors and I love our sponsors thank you so much <laughs> every year we have the, um, this array of wonderful sponsors including my family my husband is the graphic designer and uh, <laughs> much to his dismay sometimes <laughs> but I think he did an excellent job on our uh, artwork this year and right. um, followed by all of our sponsors please go to our sponsor page and see who they are awesome. all right yeah. can i add one no quick yeah, note of one of the things with fringes is because artists are often not known as starting careers uh people sometimes are a bit leery about trying something like that uh fringes are traditionally very inexpensive and half the events are free mm -hmm. so and the events that aren't free are very inexpensive so if you want to try something different it's an excellent opportunity yeah yeah i agree yeah. and, and fifteen dollars or less 
Yeah, so any chance to see artwork that isn't exactly like local or even any art at all. Yeah, yeah definitely. But we have a fifteen dollar. I mean, you will never find this anywhere else. Uh, a, a friend of mine, Jan Beatty, from um, she teaches violin at, in D Delaware, Delaware, mm -hmm. and she uh, teaches Alexander technique. And you will never ever find fifteen dollar now, uh, fifteen dollars for two hours of Alexander technique workshop. No. That's on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, thank you very much, you guys. Thank so you. they can go to their website. Pleasure. You guys can go to their website to check out uh, the full schedule and events. But we will be right back. We're going to hear from Sean Kirkpatrick, who is one of their performers. Sean Kirkpatrick, who is one of the performers of this year's Fringe Fest, and his show is entitled No Refunds. Awesome. And so tell us about it. Well, uh, basically, No Refunds is a sketch show set uh, post nuclear apocalypse in a uh, bunker, basically. So when you come into the theater, the Crystal Theater, you're entering a bunker, okay. a, a safe haven from the outside uh, to see something to sort of distract you from. The horrors of war. Yeah, the ap apocalypse yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, where did you come up with this idea? Um, I started developing it a year and a half ago in a class that I took, um, where I was challenged by a professor to write a full-length play, basically. Um, and at that time, I was very kind of upset with some of the people that I was in school with. So I wanted to write a play that was sort of a uh, screw you to the conventions of yes. traditional theater. Oh, yes. I went to journalism school and I can't even begin to tell you how many times I felt that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. I feel like everybody has to rebel at so some point. So is this kind of like sure. a, is this, it's like an excerpt, kind of like a, it feels like a one-man show kind of deal? Um, no, well, I mean, we've got a full cast. It did initially start as a one-man show, because um, I had done a one-man show with The Fringe two years ago, but this I decided, you know, I wanted to bring other people into my madness. <laughs> um, particularly, there's a couple bits that I needed a second person yeah. for, which then grew to three people, and then finally six people. Wow. So, And you've been working with these guys for how long? Uh, when did we start? Like two months ago. So cool. it's been on and off. It's been a very piecemeal process because we have some film sketches. We have some live nonsense. Oh, interesting. So it's going to be some, that'll be like video that you've already pre-recorded and yeah. then live. Yeah, one character is entirely pre-taped and so he comes in and interrupts the show at times. Really yes. cool. Yeah. That's neat. And so how many people do you have in your cast? In the live cast, it's six. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Six. Um, including our stage manager, who is a character in the show, because uh, what's the point of a fourth wall? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's really funny. And so, um, shoot, sorry, I just lost my question. No, that's fine. <laughs> I, know. I know, I was so Early. excited. Well, okay. When is this happening? Yeah, that, that August it. 19th and 20th at the Crystal at 8.30. Okay. And it's $10, so uh, bring Alexander Hamilton with you. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Um, and then, do you guys, do you have like a website people can look up of your work or the names you've done? No. Um, if you, I think we started a Facebook page, awesome. which is facebook.com slash no refunds play or okay. the play. Okay. I don't know. 
Okay. I'm, I don't have a website. I'm not that prepared. <laughs> That's on. okay. And then so, also my last question is, you've done Fringe Fest before, right? Yes. And so what was your experience like with that? It was awesome. Um, it's a great way to just sort of have a venue and just do something. Mm -hmm. Like, it gives, a, it gives the opportunity that oh, I don't think we would have had. Um, without the Fringe, it's just sort of like, here's a space, here's a time, do what you want. Have fun, basically. Yeah. It's nice that it's non-juried, so there's not a pressure to like, oh, I have to look good in front of all these people so that I can like win an award or whatever. It's like it doesn't matter if this falls apart because we went up there, we did something, and we had fun. That's awesome. I love that. All right. Yeah. Thanks, we'll Sean. We'll end on that, Sean. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, one more time, one more. Uh, August 19th and 20th at the Crystal Theater, 8:30 p.m. Yep. Awesome. Thank this you. This is uh, Sean Kirkpatrick, and his performance is this Friday and Saturday. Yep. At 8.30, Crystal Theater, no refunds. Yeah. And also no refunds. <laughs> we'll be right back with D. Ryan after this. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Your smartphone can help you find a bar. Alert your friends that you're in the bar. Update you on your team while you're at the bar. And now, let you know you need a ride home from the bar. Hmm, that is smart. Download blood alcohol calculators for your phone at plantolive.mt.gov. So, hey, we're here back with D. Ryan, and he's here to talk about what he's doing for the Fringe Festival. Yeah, yes. so D. Ryan, who are you? Uh, I am a rock and roll musician that just moved up here from Nashville, Tennessee. I spent 10 years in Nashville, and I came to Missoula, Montana with my beautiful wife, who's also an artist as well. Awesome. And uh, she's originally from Billings. Mm -hmm. We wanted to move to somewhere to start a family and decided that uh, Missoula would be a great fit for us. It really is. Missoula's the best. It's incredible. It's a great mm -hmm. city. I love this city. I just barely have been here for three months, and uh, the music in this city awesome. is unreal. I we mean, get the we get like huge bands come mm -hmm. through our tiny town. Like like Truly. Street Dive is gonna be here tomorrow night. Is, I mean it's huge. Amazing. You guys saw Sublime just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I mean it's it's a great city so far of art and culture. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. Super awesome. So what caught your ear for the French Fest? Uh, actually, uh, I decided that I, I really wanted to break into Missoula in kind of a, a different way than I've done in the past. And mm -hmm. I got approached by Michelle to uh, perform at the Fringe Fest at a couple different events. The Porch Fest and the Lounge Session we're doing as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I just kind of dug the settings of both of them with the Porch Fest being outside, playing to kind of a neighborhood and, mm -hmm. you know, kids and families because we're kind of a family a band that likes to perform to you know families and kids and so mm -hmm. get everyone perfect, involved. Yeah, it was a perfect yeah. fit for us. We're a very high energy type of band, so I think it's going to be fun. Awesome. And what kind of music do you guys play? I'm a rock and roll artist, uh, and I write songs, man. I try to write as positive as I can. Uh, I've, I've written a couple songs, and I've got four nieces, beautiful nieces, that are the loves of my life. And um, I've written songs for them in the past, and, and one of the songs, one of the videos I have on a YouTube, Baby Keep Shining, is written for one of my nieces, Lorelai, and she's in the video. And I don't know, I try to just, I try to write cool, positive music that uh, I would be willing to perform in front of, you know, any age group. That's so, awesome. Mm -hmm, definitely. So uh, tell us uh, when and where is uh, your... Okay, and Michelle's probably gonna kill me for not knowing the exact <laughs> times. Uh, the Porch Fest session, I believe, we are performing at 7.30, I believe, on Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. And then I think 8 o'clock at, no, that's wrong, 7 o'clock on Friday night at the lounge session down okay. by the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and so where can people find out more information about you? If you Google D period Ryan, you'll find me. Uh, my mm -hmm. new record is called Souls on Shoes, S-O-U-L-S. It's a uh, great album. It's got some awesome songs on it, and it's uh, 
Uh, we love performing. We perform a bunch of songs off that on uh, Wednesday and Friday, cool. for sure. And then your band's flying in from Nashville. They're flying day, in right? all over. They're actually in the air as we speak. A couple artists are coming in from Nashville. One's coming in from Salt Lake City. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's, it's gonna be a crazy next couple of days for us, for sure. Nice. We're excited about it. Super excited about yeah, it. Yeah, we're all looking forward to seeing you. In Missoula, it's, you guys, seriously, thank you so much. This town has been so welcoming to me and mm -hmm. my wife so far, and we're so ex ex you know super excited to be a part of this community. I mean, seriously, you guys have just been rad, and we're so stoked to be here. So we want to thank you very much. Well, thank you very yes, much. Absolutely, and we're looking forward to. It. So one more time, one more. Uh, uh, Wednesday night at the Porch Fest yep. at 7, 7.30, I believe, mm -hmm. and then uh, 7 o'clock on Friday night at the Lounge Festival festival down by the waterfront. Both awesome. of those are Fringe Festival events. Awesome. And you guys so. can check out more on uh, their website, FringeFest.com. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank you, Ryan. guys. I appreciate y'all very much. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back after this. Sergeant Greg Amosmith with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope! Hey guys, we are back! And uh, we're gonna do some community events right now. So, we are starting today's Monday, as you guys know, and I know, right? I'm kind of checked in. I don't know. It's Monday. So, uh, over the Missoula Public Library today, starting at 11.30, is Kids' Table. This is where, if you're 18 or younger, ages 18 and younger, you can get a free food. You can get some free lunch. And then they do an activity afterward. So that's always good. Over at Montgomery Distillery is Moscow Monday. A dollar from each cocktail sold will go back to the nonprofit of the day. It's usually uh, related with environmental stewardship, um, something having to do with homelessness, and then as well as like children's programs. So if you like fall, if you're a nonprofit and fall under those categories, you can apply for uh, their nonprofit day. Yeah. Trampoline camp is still going on over at Roots Acro Sports Center. They've got a half day one starting at 12.30, so ages seven to 12. Um, and so let's see, a regular registration is $99, but if you walk in, it's $109. They also have an acro dance camp, uh, also at 12.30. Same price, $99 for a regular registration for a half day. Walk in is $109. And that is about dancing as well as gymnastics. Bridge group is at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 1 p.m. This is a beginner's brush up group. Uh, Duplicate Bridge is at the Garden City Duplicate Bridge Club also at 1 p.m. That's on Stockyard Road. Over at the Missoula Public Library, we have computer electronics in their makerspace that starts at 3 o'clock. Uh, if you want to go in there, you can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. Wordplay is at the base at the Warehouse Mall at 4 o'clock. This is word games, poetic, uh, exploration, free writing, and expansion through sharing. Over at the Top Hat Lounge, they've got their Raising the Dead, the live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead from the four, uh, 50s, no, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. They have a trivia and a happy hour so you get your dead fix while getting some delicious food. Open Mic Night is at the Imagination Brewing Company at 6. Also at 6 is an intro to email class over at the Missoula Public Library. If you uh, know how to use a computer but don't really know how to use an email, you can go in there and they'll show you how. 
We've got some music. Larry Hirschberg will be at the Red Wine Bar at 7 o'clock. And we've got some karaoke over the VFW uh, at 9.30. So that is what's going on in your community. Up next, we've got Musical Notes with Asaph Adonai. Well, first I wanted to give the latest update on Aquaman, Michael Phelps. You know, I've been talking about him off and on all week. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, Aquaman has done it again, his last hurrah, by winning two more gold medals ending his career. His team made sure they got him that final gold medal in the uh, swimming, the team swimming competition. And he has 28 medals, 23 of them gold, three silver, and two bronze. Wow. So I just wanted to... Is he retiring this yeah, year? Yeah, he's retiring. He, he's he's going to get out on top. So that's really good. And I, I just wish him all the best. He's got a new son now, Aww. family. And they showed little a little Phelps. kid on a TV. So that's yeah, cute. little Phelps. Maybe he'll follow in his father's footsteps and be the second Aquaman. man. Yeah. Knows. Okay, getting to the musical notes. Just last night... I was watching an episode of The Odd Couple with Tony Randall and Jack Klugman, and it was about this landlord who wanted Felix Unger to get out of the apartment. <laughs> and so what the landlord does is he takes the front doors out of all the tenants in the complex and turns off the heating system and says, I will not turn the heating system on until Felix Unger gets out of this apartment because he's driving me nuts. What a terrible landlord. Yes. Anyway, our guest on Musical Notes happens to be the owner of the complex. Ooh. So his agent picked up the little, our little guest, which I'll mention in a moment, and the little guest, they put him on a table and said to the landlord, you're fired. <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, made me think of Donald Trump because, you know, our guest on today's musical notes made that more famous than Donald Trump did. <laughs> so anyway, our guest on today's musical notes is the one and only most popular child star of the 70s, and there he is, Rodney Allen Rippey, known to the world as Rodney Allen Rippey. <laughs> and this little picture here is how this little boy got famous. I think he was like three years old when they shot this. He had a classic, iconic line called, it's too big to eat. Not bad for a three-year-old. He was trying to get sink his teeth around that, uh, that um, Jumbo Jack from the Jack in the Box restaurant. And so if we have those videos, let's show this little boy in action here. Now you won't be able to see the, hear the sound, but see, he's, he's trying to pick up this jumbo jack and he's being interviewed by a narrator. What's your name, Rodney? What's your last name? Rodney Allen Rippey. What you gonna do, little guy? I'm gonna eat this hamburger. And watch what happens. He, he goes to pick it up and he can't even, he can't even get a mouthful. <laughs> and then he says, it's too big to eat. And that phrase became a catchphrase in the 70s. Now let's check out the second video here and see him in action. Here he is at the AMA Awards with Michael Jackson. And it's really funny because they, they have these two little boys presenting the announcer. And so when Rodney Allen Rippey takes the card out to mention the announcer, he, he didn't know who the group was. <laughs> and that's why the audience was laughing and he couldn't pronounce the name of the group that one it was the carpenters that one and so he just rips it and tears the letter out and waves it in the camera and it showed on camera who the winner was oh and that's hilarious that's why it was so funny but anyway my final words about Rodney Allen Rippey um, he's a former American child actor He's appeared in all the Jack in the Box commercials throughout the early 70s, and that catapulted him to doing a lot of television shows. He's appeared on shows like The Six Million Dollar Man with Lee Majors, Marcus Welby, MD with Robert Young, Police Story, The Odd Couple, as I mentioned, with Tony Randall and Jack Klugman. And here he is as an adult. He is 48 years old now in real life. He went on to graduate from the Cal State University Dominguez Hills in 1995. He still does a, a few acting roles like um, Parker Lewis Can't Lose in the early 90s and he appeared in the 1997 independent film Former Child Star and the 2003 David Spade comedy Dickie Roberts. He also appeared in 1974 in Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddles. <laughs> so this little guy here has done quite a bit in his life and he still eats giant hamburgers. You'll catch him on YouTube on behalf of Jack in a Box. 
Nice. But of course, he can sink his teeth into him now, but that has followed this little guy all of his entire career. That's pretty cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, I would have definitely bought a hamburger after watching that. Yeah, you know how many people went to Jack in the Box after watching that little kid oh, eat sure. that? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. A ton. A ton of people, yeah. and it made him very famous <laughs> yep. to this day. Rodney Allen Rippey. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Sure. Here. And we won't go to any videos, because I think we've shown you guys plenty of videos, so we'll just jump straight into Tuesday events with Noel. Hit it, awesome. Noel. Sounds great. Thanks, Scott. Maybe I'll get to my camera. You already ready? Duh. I don't ever know. Like, I guess. And then I try not to look down, and then I'm just like, blah. Okay. It's okay to look. <laughs> Where's that hand come from? <laughs> 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 All right, you guys. All right. Moving All on. Right. God, we're too crazy. <laughs> Over at the Missoula Public Library is open hours in the makerspace. It starts at 10 a.m. You can learn how to use your equipment or work on a project of your choice. Um, also, tomorrow at 10 a.m., Oh, excuse me. Is that over at Frenchtown Pond State Park, they've got their Junior Ranger program. Um, and so they're going to be learning about wonders of water and geology rocks. You learn about the fish in Frenchtown Pond and the rocks that make up the mountains of Montana. Over at the Historical Fort Museum, they've got kids' activities at the fort. So from 11 to 12 and 3 to 4, every Tuesday and Thursday, they have fun activities. At the Roxy Theater, um, at 11 a.m., I usually at every Tuesday in the past month, they've been doing uh, different children's movies. And so this is another really good one that is like an anime movie that's made by a Japanese director. Um, it's called Spirited Away. And if you guys don't remember this, it was very, very popular. And I remember watching it when I was younger, and I just absolutely loved it. So it's about this 10-year-old girl and her parents who uh, stumble upon an abandoned museum, amusement park. After her mother and father turn into giant pigs, this girl meets the mysterious Haiku, who explains that the park is a resort for supernatural beings who need a break from their time spent in the earthly realm, and that she must work there to free herself and her parents. It sounds really scary, but it's not. <laughs> so that's at 11 o'clock at the Roxy Theater. <clears throat> it is a really scary movie. Yeah, it sounds like the plot is kind of terrifying. Like, yeah. <laughs> Old baby's like, is gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took away my parents to turn them into pigs. I have to work here to free them? Like, that's terrifying. It's a cute movie. <laughs> Over in the Alps boardroom, there's Shooting the Bull Toastmasters. It starts at noon. This is where you can, uh, this is a lively Toastmasters club where you can uh, grow your vocabulary skills and improve your public speaking. The Alps boardroom is in the Florence building. At the Children's Museum of Missoula at 3 o'clock tomorrow, they've got tissue paper flowers. Or no, that's at 3.30. And then at 4 o'clock over the Learning Center at Red Willow is a Yoga Warriors, a specific yoga program designed for war, for uh, for soldiers and their uh, soldiers with PTSD as well as their caregivers and to help them with anxiety and sleeping problem. Sleeping problems. Gosh, I'm stumbling over myself today. Uh, we've got our Tuesday night Missoula Farmer's Market over the Red X's tomorrow at 5.30. And then Yoga in the Parks is at 6. This is going to be held at Bonner Park, um, and that is put on by Missoula Rec. The Picking Circles at the Top Hat Lounge also at 6 o'clock. This is for bluegrass-oriented musicians to go down and jam out. Um, and then there's a Community Creative Writing Workshop at 6 o'clock. That is at uh, the Public Library. Essential Oil Basics, that's at 6 o'clock. This is going to be at the Trough at 2106 Clements Road. Um, and so a woman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin is going to be here to teach them the basics of essential oils and how to incorporate them into your home and health routine. So, yeah. The Good Food Store has a cooking class. It's hands-on uh, cheese making. That starts at 6.30. It costs $45. Over at the Missoula Art Museum, they have got an artist lecture with Abby Miller. Abby Miller uh, is an artist that had an exhibit there a couple months ago, and what it, or earlier this year. Um, and so what it was, it was fabric and that she used as well as zippers. I've got a picture of it. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So that's all fabric as well as zippers. 
Yeah, I, I, I saw it at the Mizora Museum. It's really cool. Yeah, it's super cool. It takes over basically the other part of uh, floor two. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. it's like you, it's in the new part of the building, but it's on the second floor and it kind of like goes from that, you know how it has the little high rise that goes mm -hmm. to the next section of the second floor? It's, it, it's, it's an architectural building. It's an art building. Yeah. So it, it goes from there and it actually stretches out until the top part. It's really, really neat. It's sure. beautiful. Yeah, and so um, they, her art is actual will be there tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I've got two more events. We've got uh, Michael Franchi and Spearhead will be playing at Big Side Brewing Company at 7.30. And then Lake Street Dive with Gregory Allen Isaacoff will be playing the Woman Theater at 8. So as always, you guys, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, The Independent, and The Missoulian for more community events. Nice. Yeah. Well, it is Monday, and I do have yeah. a Tales from the Week. Oh, do you? Ooh. Perfect. Nice. But, of course, I'm going to try to get through this pretty quickly, because we had a lot of guests on our show. Um, but today, um, the title of this Tales from the Weekend story is called Secret Steve. Nice. <laughs> All well, right. Can't wait. All right. Are you guys ready? Yep. All right. It's not that kind of secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a story about Secret Steve. Hey, he likes secrets so much that he's gotten so good at getting people to reveal them. Oh. His best friend, Stephanie, who is always hiding from her boyfriend because she's afraid he'll break up with her. Long story short, he will. But <laughs> this isn't about secrets. This is about Secret Steve. Franklin is uh, Stephanie's boyfriend who hasn't seen his little Steph in over a month because she's been avoiding him on the physical plane of existence. Basically <laughs> texting back and forth, but just has not actually done anything. With a simple, busy here, a busy there, everywhere a busy busy, old Mick Franklin had a flaky girlfriend, L-A-M-E-O, <laughs> and Lamo was her name. -o. Steve, like anyone who has been friends with both characters around the same time, was sucked into the drama that is Frank and Steph. You see what it did there? I shortened their names, just to save time. But of course, I replaced it with this sentence, which made it just as long. Anyways, never mind. Anyways, um, Steve was just hanging out with Steph, and as per usual, asking for advice that she would never take. <laughs> she just needed someone to talk to about her problems. Steve tried to convince Steph to talk to Frank without leaving uh, vague wink emojis and LOLs, texts about this or that. but to have a real conversation with him. Um, Steph agreed, but never followed through. Franklin was getting frustrated, and he wanted to uh, do the right thing and talk with Steph rather than break up with her via text or whatever. Um, Steve agreed that next time they hung out with Steph, he would tell Frank right away so that he could meet up with them and do this breakup right. So, that, so it was like a trap. They yeah. wanted to trap her. But of course, mm, she was smart. Um, Unfortunately, Steve wasn't called Secret Steve because he was good at keeping secrets. And Steph now began to avoid both of the guys. <laughs> it got to the point where that Steph was able to avoid even while she was working. So, like, like they showed up at her work. You know, that's like the yeah. next nice place. It's like, oh, oh, wait, she's not here. Sorry. It's like, what? How could she not be? She's just not work. <laughs> <laughs> it had seemed that this relationship would be in limbo forever. It was uh, another month, and Steve and told Frank to forget about stuff and to move on because a relationship should be an active one. Um, Frank told Steve that he had slept with another woman. Uh-oh, last weekend. No! Steve was shocked to say the least. Um, Frank explained that he felt really bad about this and told Steve to keep this a secret and this time it had to be kept. It had seemed like Steph finally decided to contact Frank to discuss their relationship and future almost the morning after with this slutty woman. <laughs> Terrible. I know, right? It's like the worst timing ever. Yeah. But of course, it's a story. Of course, it has to be worst timing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Steve had never felt so sick in his life. On one hand, he knew that Steph was being very immature about this relationship. And on the other hand, Franklin had no right to sleep with another woman. When he was still in a relationship, you know, via Facebook or other social media <laughs> or whatever, um, Steve swore to his dying breath that he would never say a word to Steph about this. Um, Steve was home, chilling, watching Netflix and drinking a warm milk, because, you know, he likes warm milk. Um, he heard a knock on the door. He was wondering why someone uh, would be there so late, and when he opened the door, it was Franklin and Stephanie, arm in arm, back together again. It had seemed they had gotten hitched. Now they were getting married. What? Ooh. I know, right? Crazy. Steve was shocked to see the pair reconciled after all the stuff that Steph put him through and the woman that Frank 
had slept with. Steve was um, so surprised and wanted to know how these two dug themselves out of this giant hole they had dug between them. At first, they were uh, they were offended Steve would say something like this, but they laughed it off. It's like, oh, Steve, you just don't get it. Um, Steve took Franklin aside and asked him if he told her about the other girl. Franklin told Steve because he's like, oh, I thought you were going to tell her, blah, 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 blah. They had this conversation, but apparently that was not on the table when they talked about this. <laughs> so Steve agreed. So, um, of course, Franklin said, don't say anything about this. And Franklin and Steve was like, okay. <laughs> and watched as the happy couple began to cuddle up on Steve's couch and pick the movie from um, his Netflix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Darn. Get your own Netflix. Anyways. The more of the story is, get your own Netflix. No, anyway. <laughs> Those are the actual, love can make people do crazy things. And people who are on the outside looking in can never really understand why people do what they do. Very wise, Scott. Mm -hmm. It's very, very true. Exactly. Yeah. Love makes right. you do real crazy things. We're crazy. All right. So that was uh, Tales from the Weekend. Nice. Secret nice. Steve. I love it. Yeah. But of course, the story evolves as I tell it because it's just like because uh, there's no like sense like he got anyone to share their secrets because it was it, it's just kind of all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm all over the place too because my rebel. mind just kind of jumps over to this and that. It's just hopping all over. Because mm -hmm. yeah. like I, I see this like all the time with a lot of my gay friends. It's like seriously, they're just like it's one way or another. It's like oh, don't tell anyone, don't say anything. It's like. You can't keep secrets. They're so like, scandalous. They don't. It's like they ask to keep secrets. It's just like, and then it just like reveals after like five seconds. It's like don't don't tell anyone. It's like they're gonna find out, no matter you what. You can't keep a secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, secrets are kind of hard to keep though, especially when they're good and juicy. Yeah. But that's you know, it's uh, all about respectfulness towards the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to be bad at keeping secrets, but now I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so thanks for joining us. This is about our end of our morning yeah, show. Yeah, it was a good show. Yeah, Fringe Fest nice. is this week. So you guys can check out their website at fringefestival.com, uh, I believe. They'll also have .org. Okay, it's zootownfringe.org. Yep. These pamphlets will be up. Um, Kat's got a couple of them. We also have a poster you guys can come by and check out and grab a couple of these. Yep, we'll have um, Michelle and other guests on this Wednesday, Wednesday to talk about Friday. the Fringe Fest. And yeah. maybe we might get a, someone to perform for us. Yeah, yeah. So we say perform. Go. Yeah. Just like do it on the spot on live TV. <laughs> that we were probably asking before and if they are willing to perform or do anything. That'd be cool. Yeah. So you guys can, oh, excuse me, stay tuned on Wednesday and Friday because we'll have more Fridge Fest stuff mm -hmm. as well as other uh, Wake Up Missoula things that we always but, uh, do. But of course you can see last year's uh, Fringe, our Fringe Festival themed mm -hmm. episodes because yeah. we had a Fringe Festival themed episode last year mm -hmm. uh, for the Fringe Festival. I suggest you guys check that out and kind of see what you're in store with this year as well because it's yeah. always different. It's always new. It's always fresh and you can find out this and more by logging on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice that we made you write it out twice. You can like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can check us out at MCATTV Missoula. You can also like us on Facebook. And to find out more information, just go to MCAT.org. Yep. So, uh, yeah. I mean, thanks, guys, for joining yeah. us. Uh, it was a nice long show for your Monday. You know, like you, you're just supposed to fill up on all these uh, wonderful calories in the beginning of the week and then burn them off throughout the week. It's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. For Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noah McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai, and we'll see you guys Wednesday.